Hey guys, welcome back to the Skymaster F-18 build video series. Um, if you have stumbled across my channel and you're looking for the entire series, I'll put a link in the description below to the uh, the build playlist and that'll have all the, all the build videos summarized in one. Uh, if this is your first time here or you just want to support the channel, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Helps the YouTube algorithm. Also hit that subscribe button down below and uh, don't forget to hit the bell when you hit that subscribe button so you get notified when I release new videos. Let's dive into this. All right guys, so a couple things that I'm checking here before I put the gear back in is uh, just to make sure that the the gear doors all operate smoothly. Shouldn't be any resistance when you are very, very little resistance. I mean, there's gonna be a little bit on the O-ring in, uh, in the actual air cylinders, but um, just making sure that all the gear doors operate nice and smoothly and they operate as they should. And then what we'll do is these little, um, uh, nuts and bolts that are holding the uh, the air cylinders on. We'll just put a drop of CA on the back of them, just to make sure they don't uh, they don't unthread. So we'll do that on all those, and uh, everything else looks good. Um, the washers are are high salt in place when the uh, factory installed the gear. And it looks like they actually used high saw or or a version of it to to glue all this stuff together, which is kind of nice to see. Um, so, anyways, we're gonna bolt the gear in now. Once I uh, put some CA on the back of those those uh, air cylinder threads, and um, I'll show you what it looks like with the gear bolted in. All right, guys, gear is installed, and uh, she looks good. Happy with everything, everything worked out well. Um, so I just put the cockpit in there um, essentially just to see how much space we have underneath and we got lots of space there. Um, you know, if we need to put any equipment, that's a good place to put equipment on top of the gear. Um, we can make a plate on there. And there's also the tray that goes in this section here as well too and then batteries in the nose. So the nice thing about putting equipment in the this nose tray, and this is kind of all of my, um, just my thought process. I'm kind of just saying this out loud. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet, but uh, you know, we're gonna have to make sure that the the everything works, right? You want accessibility to things without taking out the cockpit, things like that. So um, just kind of verbally going out, uh, going through things in my head and uh, not, entirely sure 100% what's going to happen yet but uh, this is part of my build process and uh, that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. So we do have that equipment tray in the front uh, which we can put equipment on and uh, the nice thing with that is the nose cone would uh, the, the the tray for the battery and stuff here would come off fairly easy um, and we could access anything that we put there so that's one good option for uh, for equipment mounting. Um, if we do mount stuff in this area on a plate, um, obviously it's not going to be very easy to access without taking the cockpit out. Um, one kind of unique thing that I just noticed here is, so you got the um, canopy latch system or uh, the scale canopy latch system here. And it actually overlaps and lines up with uh, this piece here. So what, uh, what I'm probably going to end up doing is just slicing the center section out. And then with that center section sliced out, it should cover nicely uh, most of the, uh, the canopy opening and closing mechanism, which is kind of cool. It's neat. One thing I've started doing just while, uh, while I have time and... Um, is just paint some of the things like the the trays and stuff that are going in. So this is that front equipment tray uh, Just painting that gray gonna also paint the nose cone gray as well, too. This is the battery mounting area um, Just getting that done before it actually needs to be done and I'm waiting for it Nothing like waiting for paint to dry. All right guys So the last thing we have to do with the gear on the front nose here is deal with the uh, the door situation so uh, when this door is actually up against the strut, um, this piece 
sits almost touching the uh, the black part there, and uh, when it turns, it, the when the strut turns, it touches, and you can actually see the wear marks. Uh, you might be able to see the wear marks on there. So we've got to uh, do a little uh, little bit of love on the door and uh, probably sand about a quarter of an inch off that. And uh, just going to use my Dremel and my, uh, my vacuum and we will uh, sand that out and see what we can uh, come up with. All right, guys, there we go. I didn't have to take very much off. It was about uh, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. But we've got no contact now and uh, it's spaced out well, so... So, the front gear's all done. Um, we're not painting it or anything, we're just gonna leave it like it is. And uh, now we're gonna set this piece aside and move on to the rear fuselage section. All right, one other little tidbit here. We wanna add smoke to the plane. So, um, we've got this Carf uh, Ultra Flash tank, which is an extra tank. So what we're thinking about doing is probably putting um, the air cylinder is either down here or in the front nose section, one of the two. And, uh, but anyways, the carf wing ta or, uh, fuselage tank would fit perfectly right there if we built a little platform for it. Um, not super and far of the front of the CG. I mean, it is. We're close to this, uh, this spar is where we are. So we've got the main fuel tank here. We've got the saddle tanks here, so the main fuel tank is not very far in front of the uh, the CG point. I mean, the the smoke tank would be sitting, you know, in this section here, but uh, there's really there's no other options for back there. Um, it would be nice if we could fit a smoke tank in these uh, little buildouts here, but I don't know how realistic that is. And uh, would also be nice to fit one on top, but we don't have any room. So again, CG point is on the wing spar, roughly the front wing spar. And main tank is right here, smoke tank right there. So obviously it'd be nice to have a, a larger smoke tank that was uh, closer to the CG point. So we'll see, just throwing out ideas right now, but that's one of the ideas that we have. All right, guys, just moving on here to the uh, the rear or main portion of the fuselage. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to pull these engines out. They're not uh, mounted in permanent or anything right now. They're just sitting in there. So we're going to pull the engines out, pull the uh, the main fuel tank out. That's just sitting in there. It's not uh, not fixed at all. And uh, we're going to vacuum out the uh, the fuselage just to get rid of some of the dust and, and crap that's in there. I'll just show you the the mechanisms to uh, to secure the elevators. So right now with my finger, I'm pushing on the bottom of the fuselage on that button, um, and you can see the uh, the little keeper moving up and down. So if you were to use an Allen key and push this all the way up, uh, the uh, the elevators can slide in place. This is spring-loaded, so it pops down and holds the elevators and keeps them firmly, uh, firmly locked in place. So it's a nice, uh, nice little keeper system. Okay, guys. So that's uh, that's the elevator mounting system, and then in there you can see the two tabs, top and bottom. That's for the um, exhaust uh, tube mounting, and then obviously there's one on each side. Uh, so I don't know if that uh, fully lines up yet or anything. We'll have to check that out, obviously. Um, and the last thing I'll show you here before I take the engines out is the rails that the engine sits in. The, there's a stopper, and uh, so it only goes in so far. So we'll have to uh, check the alignment on the uh, exhaust pipes and stuff, of course. But uh, that uh, that's kind of an overview of the rear fuselage. Let's pull these engines out and do some vacuuming. All right, guys, so I just pulled the factory tape off the uh, the gear doors here. So this is the first time I'm going to be uh, opening them. And uh, let's see how they feel. Okay, so there's a little bit of resistance on this guy. It's smooth here. Gets about halfway, and then it uh, takes a bit of a, a extra effort. So we need to make sure we check that out. Um check the angle and, and everything with the air cylinder. These other doors, 
Uh, very similar. Gets about halfway and then is a little bit of resistance. And then this one, ooh, that one's got quite a bit of resistance. So we definitely need to check all the gear doors out and make sure they actually operate at, uh, you know, a reasonable pressure. Well, see that one's a lot smoother. So it's easy for the, about half the travel and then it's quite a bit easier than the other side to open up. And this inside one uh, feels okay. Again, a little bit of resistance on the end. And this outside one, same as the other side, a ton of resistance. And that's this air cylinder here. So it could just be the angle that it's at. And um, so we'll play around with those a little bit, but definitely something that you want to, you want to check out because if you left it like that, um, you might be struggling with your gear doors. That's a ton of resistance to have to, uh, to have to overcome. So yes, it comes from the factory, apparently ready to go, but uh, I wouldn't fly with it like that myself, so. Okay guys, so here's the uh, inside view with the gear doors open. So what we're gonna do is we're going to drop this gear, uh, kind of get it out of the way. And um, then what we're gonna focus on is any of the bolts that go into uh, blind nuts, right? So that's all these guys on the back here. They all go into this former, into, uh, into blind nuts. So we want to make sure we lock tight those. And there's uh, two, three, four, five, six on each side. So we've got 12. These front ones are have nylon uh, lock washers on the other side instead of blind nuts. Now that could be the case over here. I don't know if those are blind nuts or if they're nylon lock washers encased in, uh, in high sol or epoxy. So I'll, I'll take my mirror and check that out. Um, so those will be okay, and uh, looks like everything else is nylon lock washers. So, so that's good. A couple of things I initially want to do here. Uh, we want to check those bolts. Um, these airlines here, um, they may be fine, but we want to wrap those probably in a protective, uh, like snakeskin material, just because when this gear retracts, it's going to be. Uh, spinning and if it spins against those uh, those airlines it can puncture them pretty quick you know this one actually touches the tire and then when I spin this wheel here I see that the uh, the gear is actually rubbing the brake line so we'll check the brake lines when they're when the gears dropped all right guys so if you can see in the mirror there um, so we don't have uh, nylon lock nuts we've got blind nuts uh, for all the uh, gear mounting points at the front front portion there So I will take them apart lock tight them all so we've got 12 screws to deal with and uh, That portion will be done. All right guys. I just want to show you how important uh, using Loctite on these uh, these items is So I've already started loosening this bolt off, but this one right here. Uh, I haven't touched yet and uh, like I can use the this is my L-Bend um, Allen key it's a three millimeter and I can use the small end and easily undo that bolt. So it's super important anytime you are putting together a plane, um, doesn't matter what it is, any metal to metal contact should have blue Loctite on it to prevent it from coming loose. So I will always talk about that over and over and over again, but it is such an important thing. Absolutely do not rely on the manufacturer to put Loctite on bolts. Okay guys, so from the top here, we've got two screws right here. Okay, there's two down there. Um, I also did the two that are on this, uh, this aluminum cross member. Uh, there's one that you can see and there's one inset on the side. Um, so those are all done. I also checked these back ones as well too. They were all a little bit loose, so they've all been snugged up. And now there's two more underneath the, uh, the main gear system here that uh, you'll have to retract the gear and... Uh, and then you can access them, they're right there. So there's one and then two. Now you don't need to have air hooked up to this to make it work. 
Um, this is the lock here, so you can just move the lock over and uh, the gear will drop down. So. All right, so I'm going to finish up by loctiting these four bolts on the bottom, and that will be the main gear. Okay, guys, so we're going to uh, add the snakeskin to the airlines here. Uh, I forgot to push record the first time. Um, so anyways, what we're going to do is I'll show you guys how to uh, to cut the uh, airline off here without actually scoring the, the nipple. So the last thing you want to do is take an exacto knife and cut the tubing this way because um, what's going to happen is you're going to put a little nick in the actual nipple itself and then it's way more prone to leaking so I just take a pair of side cutters this style works as well too but this is a little bit easier doing this one-handed and you grab the tubing at about the one-third mark and snip it you're never actually even touching the the metal part of the nipple and then the tubing just comes off. And this works for airline tubing, Festo tubing, Tigon tubing, anything. And uh, it's a great way to get the, uh, the tubing off the nipple. Anyways, this is a challenge to do with one hand, guys, but you get the idea. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're going to do. Then we're going to add uh, a section of snake skin over top just this little piece just to protect the tubing from the tire and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. All right, now this is the little uh, section of snake skin for the airline tubings. Uh, this stuff works great, but I find it's helpful to also make sure you melt the ends as well too, just like a section of rope. Um, if you don't do that, it just splits and goes all crazy. So it's ready to use. Need one more piece for the other side. So we will melt that side and then measure it out. And this other side is actually even shorter. And melt that. Perfect. So those are ready to use. Uh, they won't fray and uh, they'll work good. All right, guys, so the uh, snake skin's installed. I put zip ties on this side just because it's such a short little run and uh, um, it just basically needed the zip ties. This side doesn't need it because it's uh, going to the cylinder and then going to the uh, little uh, line keeper there and it's got a nice longer piece to it but even cutting just that uh, nipple length off also made the uh, the lines not touch the wheels anymore too so so that's a better setup it uh, looks like it's gonna work good the okay, next thing we're gonna do is work on the gear doors so I think all of the gear doors are good except these outside rear ones they're exceptionally tight for almost the entire travel the other ones are good um, I'm satisfied with them they they work good I've actually used uh, I just took the airlines and used my compressor and uh, and just lightly blew into them and and they all worked except these outside ones so now generally what happens when uh, when these gear doors stop working or don't work so well is they're traveling at an angle. So when I'm looking at this gear door, I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the camera, but as I extend the gear door, it actually puts um, pressure sideways towards the rear of the plane uh, on the air piston. So I think, just as, a, as an experiment, if I loosen this nut off and add some more length on this air piston, and bring the air piston back, we'll be able to see what's going on here. So let me do that and I'll show you guys. Okay, so the air cylinder has been completely um, disconnected. Now what that allows me to do is open and close this door, and now we know that uh, the angles of the hinges are off, and as the door opens, it gets really, really stiff. So it's not the air cylinder, it's actually the uh, the hinges themselves. So what we'll try and do first is we're going to add a little bit of lubricant on the hinges, see if that helps it enough, 
and uh, if not, we'll go to the next step. All right, guys, and that lubricant was enough to cut, overcome the uh, the uh, restrictions on all the doors. So what I did was I just went in and lubricated all the hinge points and uh, added a drop of silicone lube on the uh, the shafts for the uh, the air cylinders, just right there, and uh, everything works really good right now. So very, very happy. It made the whole system much smoother. And uh, everything works awesome right now. So much better. Um, nice, simple solution. Um, if, if that was not a solution, then we have to get into uh, sanding the, uh, the actual hinge points out a little bit to create a little bit of space and uh, free it up a bit. But in this case, we don't have to do that. So... That is the gear, guys. Um, landing gear front, landing gear main, gear doors are all ready to go. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Skymaster F18 build video series. Um, again, if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Also hit the bell when uh, you hit that subscribe button so you get notified when I release new videos. Uh, we accomplished a fair bit in this video and uh, basically the gear is done and we are ready to move on to the other parts. So there is quite a bit that we're going to get into in the, uh, the next video. Uh, we may move into installing the turbines, working on the rear section of the fuselage, or we may move into the the wings themselves. Now I uh, I helped the uh, the owner of this airplane with his previous F-18 by uh, by fixing the wings that didn't come from the manufacturer um, set up properly. So uh, we should have a, easy, a fairly easy time on this plane setting up the wings. But uh, that'll be kind of what we move into on the next videos. And uh, again, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.